Hello and welcome. Again, I am here with a new case of coefficient of correlation, rather calculation of coefficient of correlation. The data given is n is 10, sigma x 140, sigma y 150, sigma x minus 10 whole square 180, sigma y minus 15 whole square 215, sigma x minus 10, y minus 15 equals to 60. This is product of deviation. But now the question is whether these are deviations taken from arithmetic mean or assumed mean. Let us first find arithmetic means. X by sigma X by N that is 140 by 10. So it should be 14 and Y by sigma Y by N that is 150 by 10 equals to 15. So we can say that in case of X the amount subtracted is not actual mean or arithmetic mean. So it must be assumed mean. Now if in case of any one variable we have subtracted assumed mean, we must believe that in case of other variable also we have subtracted assumed mean. So 15 is also the assumed mean. But in this case 15 assumed mean is exactly equal to the actual or arithmetic mean. But in case of x the assumed mean is different from actual mean. So this these are say sigma u square, sigma v square and sigma uv. They are not sigma x minus x bar whole square, sigma y minus y bar whole square and sigma x minus x bar y minus y bar. They are not. Because in case of x, we have subtracted the assuming. So we have to believe that in case of y also we have subtracted assuming. So now it is clear that this is sigma u square. This is sigma v square and this one is sigma u v. But with these three, we must have sigma u and sigma v. We cannot calculate the coefficient of correlation by taking sigma x and sigma y with these two. We have to take all summations of the deviations taken from assumed means. So first we have to find out sigma u and sigma v. What is the way? There is a way. The another formula to calculate by indirect way is like this. Assuming plus summation of the deviations upon n into class interval but it is immaterial because there is no information about the class interval. X bar is 14. A is 10 the assumed mean plus sigma u is missing 10. First of all we have to shift 10 on the opposite side. Therefore, 14 minus 10 equals to sigma u upon 10. 14 minus 10 is 4. So, 4 into 10 equals to sigma u. Therefore, sigma u comes to 40. Similarly, y bar. Now, first of all, assume mean and actual mean in case of y are same. That means this can be treated as deviations taken from actual mean. And we know that the summation of deviations taken from actual mean is always 0. How? Assume mean plus deviations upon n. Therefore, 15 equals to 15 plus sigma v upon 10. 15 minus 15 is 0. So 0 into 10 equals to sigma v. So ultimately sigma v is 0. Because assume mean and actual mean are same. Sigma u is exactly equal to sigma x minus x bar. Similarly sigma v is exactly equal to sigma y minus y bar. But now we have all five summations. Sigma u, sigma v, sigma u square, sigma v square and sigma u v. So we can calculate r. And sigma x, y Sorry, no, 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 I am very sorry. Coefficient of correlation between x and y is exactly equals to correlation coefficient between u and v and sigma uv minus sigma u into sigma v upon under root and sigma u square minus sigma u the whole square into under root and sigma v square minus sigma v the whole square. Let us substitute the values. N is 10. Sigma UV is 60. 
minus sigma u 40 into sigma v 0 upon under root n is 10 sigma u square is 180 minus 40 square into under root n is 10 sigma v square is 215 minus 0 square so ultimately 10 into 60 is 600 40 into 0 is 0 10 into 180 is 1800 minus 40 square is 1600 into under root 10 into 215 is 21500 minus 0 square is 0 so ultimately it is like this 600 upon under root 200 into under root 21500 what is exactly the value of multiplication of all these two in the denominator it comes to 655.744 so the coefficient of correlation between x and y equal to correlation coefficient between u v comes to 0 0.915. But the important thing is how to find sigma u and sigma v. The main point of this problem is how to find out sigma u and sigma v from the information available. This sum can be solved in another way but that way is Selenier. We have to open the brackets and we have to find out the values of sigma x square, sigma y square and sigma xy. But that is a lengthy technique so I don't suggest that technique to solve this problem. We will discuss that technique in the next lecture. That's it. Thank you very much.